the format of being robot. It had been a tense two months and eight days since the mysterious 5th of September 1999 CFAX anomaly. Viewers who had witnessed the bizarre events on that fateful day had not forgotten the cryptic messages and disturbing imagery that flashed across their screens, or the unnerving alteration of the calming CFAX music into a dissonant symphony of terror. For some, it had been more than just a shocking experience. The night of the 13th of November 1999, would be forever etched into the memories of those who tuned into BBC2. Just as the clock struck midnight, the CFAX service once again took a gruesome transformation. The familiar comforting pages of teletext were replaced by a nightmarish descent into the unknown. Strange symbols, distorted text, and grotesque images were on the screen, flickering in an erratic dance of digital chaos. The calming music that accompanied the CFAX service twisted and distorted, slowing down until it was unrecognizable. In its place came sounds from the depths of hell itself, echoing with the tormented screams of the damned. It was a horrifying droning sound that sent shivers down the spines of anyone who dared to watch. Viewers, already traumatized by the previous incident, found themselves unable to look away as the nightmarish imagery and sounds enveloped their living rooms. Panic spread like wildfire, and many scrambled to turn off their TVs, but even that proved to be a challenge as the remote controls refused to respond. Those who witnessed the horrifying spectacle suffered severe symptoms. Seizures, headaches, and unrelenting panic attacks left many in a state of terror. Frantic calls to emergency services inundated the phone lines, and hospitals were overwhelmed with patients suffering from the sudden onslaught of medical emergencies. Most of the people who endured their agonizing fate did not survive, and then passed away unexpectedly. BBC2 was forced to go off the air for two days after the incident, just as they had following the September anomaly. Their technicians worked tirelessly to investigate the cause and make sure it wouldn't happen again. During this time, a sense of dread hung in the air, as viewers anxiously awaited news of what had transpired. At midnight on the 15th of November 1999, BBC2 finally returned to the airwaves. The channel's CFAX service had been fixed, and the BBC executives issued an official apology to the viewers. They assured the public that measures had been taken to prevent any further anomalies, promising that the nightmare that had gripped their screens would not repeat itself. But for those who had lived through the horrors of the 5th of September and the 13th of November 1999, the scars remained. They would forever be haunted by the enigmatic chilling events that had unfolded on their TV screens, forever wary of the electronic specter that seemed to lurk within the heart of the CFAX service.